this word. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to hear from you today, God. You are worthy to be praised. We acknowledge your presence in this place, God. We honor you in this place, God. We set aside this moment to hear from you. God, open our ears so that we can hear what you have to say and open our hearts that we would be able to receive the words that you are saying. God, we need to hear from you. Nothing else matters but this. We need to hear from you. It is only you that can speak to each and every one of us individually and know exactly what we need to hear and yet speak to us all at the same time. God, your word is already anointed. We thank you for what you will speak into the hearts of your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so we have been in a series uh, called Home Improvement. And if you haven't been here, or maybe this is your first time, I would encourage you, please, wherever you get your podcast from or our Facebook, Limitless Life TV, uh, you can go and watch uh, the past sermons as it pertains to this series. Home Improvement. We're looking at all the different areas of our life and assessing our foundations. Okay? So uh, the first week, we talked about making sure that our foundation is solid. Week two, we talked about the importance of community and relationship. We said that God has an importance that he has placed on community and relationship. Week three, we looked at uh, how important it is to parent according to the word of God. What does it mean that our parenting lines up not with culture, but with the word of God? And today, I want to uh, uh, close out our series talking about the covenant of marriage. We're talking about the covenant of marriage and how important it is that every area of our marriage is based solely on the Word of God. Every area of our marriage is based solely on the Word of God. Uh, Let's define what marriage is, and let's define what a covenant is. I want to be very clear about this so that there's no ambiguity and that we know as we go into this, what we're talking about, all right? Let's define marriage. Marriage is defined as a relationship established through covenant between a man and a woman, okay? Marriage is a relationship that has been established through covenant between a man and a woman. Next question would be then, what is a covenant? I'm glad you asked. I got the answer for you. A covenant is a divinely created relational promise and bond that outlines how one another will operate, okay? A divinely created relational promise and bond, okay? Relational promise and bond that outlines how one another will operate operate. God is big on covenants. We look all throughout the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, he talks about covenants. It's bigger than a promise. This is a big deal, okay? A covenant is a big deal. And in the covenant, we see God outlining how he will operate in this promise or bond that he has made, okay? gives very specific instructions. When he made a covenant with Abraham, he gave specific instructions. When he made a covenant with the children of Israel, he gave specific instructions. And this is no different. Marriage is a covenant. So when you look at your marriage, when you look at your spouse, if you're not married and you're here today, even how you look at your view of marriage The question is, what is it based on? What is that based on? 
you're not married, you're looking to be married, what things have culminated your view of what marriage is or it isn't? And whether you are married or unmarried, where your view came from matters. And let me tell you why. It matters because the world hates marriage. The world hates marriage. Satan hates marriage. Hates it. So, being that the world hates marriage and Satan hates marriage, if your view of marriage is influenced by anything other than the word of God or the examples of marriages that are rooted in the word of God, then your view of marriage is skewed and founded on a foundation that was created to fail. Our culture has no regard for marriage. It has no respect for marriage, and it has no honor for marriage. So if you get it from the world, it's skewed. Um, I remember when I was younger, um, I would watch uh, television, um, and I had to watch whatever my mother was watching. So, um, you know, days of our lives, as the world turns, um, <laughs> General Hospital, Young and the Restless, Oprah. One of the things I watched was entertainment tonight. The young people are like, what, is, what are these things? Is, are these YouTube shows? No. Uh, one, one, of, one of the things I watched was entertainment tonight. And I remember uh, when entertainment tonight would come on, because I would feel like, oh, okay, I can relate. I can find out what's going on. Uh, Entertainment Tonight, I remember when I was younger, they would come and they would announce whenever a star or someone would get divorced. And I remember we would be heartbroken. We would be done when they would say that somebody that we watched or somebody that we looked at as a star got divorced. We'd be like, oh, they look so good together. Come on, son. Every time. Come on, son. They, they were just so happy. I, I, and we, here's what we were like, I hope they get back together. This can't be it, right? That's what we would say. We would be invested in the success of their marriage. And we would be distraught when they got divorced. And then we would see it again. It's another one. Another one would get divorced. And we would be, you know, I just, I just felt like the last couple of times we saw her, she was unhappy. Yeah, like when you saw her on a red carpet, you felt like, anyway. <laughs> I just feel like the last couple of times we saw her, she was unhappy. Oh, and then we would say, you know what, I, was, I just hope they get back together. And then what would happen is we would continue to be told of these marriages that didn't make it. And we will continue to be told until the point where we no longer, next time it comes up, we're like, I knew they wasn't going to make it. I knew that they wasn't going to make it. I knew it was false. Why? Because they keep showing us because the world is doing everything they can to show us that marriages don't work. Yeah. That marriages are not important. And then what did they do? They say, you know what? We're going to come up with a television show. Uh, and, and what we're going to do is we're going to put people uh, together. We're going to get about seven or eight of them. And we're going to have one person talk to them for an hour uh, and spend some time with them for a little bit about an hour for about eight weeks. And at the end, they get to decide if they want to marry that person or not. And we watched it. We was on the edge of our seat. Who is he going to give the flower to? Who is it? Who, who is she going to give the rose to? Which, which one is it? And then at the end, they would have this huge wedding and a beautiful dress and a beautiful gown. And then maybe two weeks later after that, they would be divorced. And we would be like, well, yeah. They only spent an hour together for eight weeks and then they got married. I, I don't think that, that that would be enough. And they keep showing us marriage doesn't work. We'll even make a show out of it and make a whole game show out of it to show you how non-important it is. Because the world hates marriage. Marriage is not just a contractual agreement. 
It is not just a piece of paper. Marriage is a covenant relationship designed by God, intended to reflect his glory and advance his kingdom. Marriage is a covenant relationship designed by God, intended to reflect his glory and advance his kingdom. That is what marriage is. Marriage was God's idea. He is the originator of marriage. And God's vision for marriage is profound. It is, it is, it is, it is sacred. And it is countercultural. The reason that the world has a problem with marriage is because it doesn't align with what they think and how they feel and, and it doesn't let them do what they want to do and rules and things. No, 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 no. Marriage is countercultural. And although culture has redefined what marriage is, the Bible has not. The Bible has not. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, uh, and let's go to verses 4. Matthew 19, verse 4. He replied, have you never read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? We already countercultural right there. And said, for this reason. A man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined inseparably to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Counter. Culture. Two becoming one. No, I'm my own person, and I do what I want to do. Okay. I'm going to keep going if I get in trouble. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verses 23 through 24. Then Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. One flesh. Bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. What God has joined together, let no one separate it. This is why the enemy hates marriage. This is why the enemy hates marriage. This is why they will do anything and the enemy will do anything to cheapen marriage, to belittle marriage, to destroy marriage. Why? Because marriage is an example of unity. Marriage is an example of unity. If you were here last week, we, we dug deep into unity, right? Unity. We, we close John 17, 23. Then the world will know. Look at that. He says, through the unity, Jesus is praying. He says, then the world will know that you sent me. Then the world will know that you love them as much as you love me. He says, through unity, the world will know Jesus. Through unity, the world will know that they have a God that loves them just like he loves Jesus. This is why the world hates marriage. This is why the enemy hates marriage. Because it represents unity and it represents an opportunity for then the world will know. See, marriage just isn't about the people who are involved. No, marriage is about this opportunity to show the world the love of God and the grace of God and to show them what unity looks like. Somebody can see your marriage and come to Jesus. 
I know, I know, I know, I know. You thought it was about being happy. You thought it was about a soulmate. You thought it was about a picket fence and having kids and holding hands and somebody to lay in the bed with when it's cold outside. No. It's not just about that. Contrary to what the world has fed us, marriage isn't about us. If you can't say amen, say ouch, okay? It is about reflecting God's glory and God's love to the world. That's what marriage is about. It is a divine assignment that God and his word have to remain at the center at in order for it to work. I did not like your amen, so I'm going to say that again. (laughs) Marriage is a divine assignment that God and his word have to remain at the center of in order for it to work. Thank you. This doesn't work without this. It's real simple. This does not work without this. If you try to separate them, this will fail. Because this is going to remain the same. They go together, hand in hand, and it has to remain at the center. It will not be second place. It will not be third place. You cannot put it in a corner just because you have it in your house in a bookshelf, just because you have it on a pretty uh, 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 table in your room. That does not count. If If this is not at the center of your marriage and the way that you view your marriage, the way that you behave in your marriage, the way that you talk about your marriage, the way that you think about your marriage, then your marriage will fail very simple don't get mad at me that's what the word says this has to remain at the center of your marriage it is a divine assignment but God and his word have to remain at the center of it for it to work the world says that marriage is just a sheet of paper God says that it's a covenant relationship The world says marriage is to make you happy and to make you whole. God says happiness is circumstantial and marriage is to make you more like Christ. The word says, excuse me, the world says that when you fall out of love, just get a divorce. But God shows us that love is not a feeling to be chased, but a commitment to be lived out every single day. So when we look at our view of marriage, who have we been listening to? What foundation have we been building our marriage on? Have we been building it based on a foundation based on the word of God? Or have we been building a foundation based off of our culture, based off of our traditions, and based off of the world? When you look at it, you've been building this. And you've been walking in this and you've been operating in it. Based on what? Based on what? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. There we go. And let's start, Uh, yeah. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. We already, right there, I can feel it. I can feel it right now. Said the S word, right? Here we go, we ready? Submit to one another. Submit to one another. That means two people mutually submitting. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, okay? He says that we are to submit to one another. Then he's going to outline what that looks like. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband. I didn't even know this was a thing until I read this. <laughs> Sub- to your own husband, not submit to... Anyway, <laughs> submit yourselves... To your own husband. Here we go. As you, <laughs> as you do to the Lord. 
Submit yourself to your own husband as you do to the Lord. So, pastor, if you're saying, are you saying that if I have a problem submitting to my husband, that I should probably see if I have a problem submitting to the Lord? No, no, I am not saying that. The word is saying that, but I, I'm not saying that. This is what the word of God said. I don't want you coming to me because I'm going to point you back to the book. Submit yourselves to your own husband as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. His body of which he is savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, wives should also submit to their husbands in everything. Here we go. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. He sacrificed his life. He laid his will down. He laid what he wanted down. He laid his life down for the church. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing uh, with water through the word and present her to himself as the radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Husbands, oh, excuse me, in the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. Let me tell you something. I love me some me. I ain't going to hold you. I ain't going to hold you. Men, we love our bodies. Whether it's feeding them or going to the gym, we love our bodies. We're going to make sure that we look nice, smell nice, that our hair is done, that our shoes, well, uh, most of us, uh, that, that, that we shower and that we, we smell good and that we're we, 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 we going to make sure we're right. Why? Because we love ourselves. We hungry, we're going to feed ourselves. We tired, we're going to go to sleep. We love ourselves. He says that we are to love our wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed, here we go, and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of this body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to, the, to, the, to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. I read that. I was like, see, you get it. Yeah. You get it. He says, but I am talking about Christ and the church, not you guys. Christ and the church is a profound mystery. However... Each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. In the beginning of the scripture, he speaks once to the wife. He speaks to the man four times. Well, most of that is because we we need. You got to keep telling. We need repetition. But he's telling and he's giving. Why? Because we are the head as men. We are the responsible party as men. We are the leaders as men. So be reminded as a leader how you are to operate. To love your wife as Christ loved the church. To honor your wife and love your wife as your own body. I'm going to read verse 33 in the Amplified. It says, each man, each man among you, Ephesians 5, 33, each man among you, without exception, is to love his wife as his very own self with behavior worthy of respect and esteem. 
with behavior worthy of respect and esteem. How do I treat my wife? With behavior worthy of respect and esteem. What if I feel like she ain't treating me right? With behavior worthy of respect and esteem. What if I feel like she ain't doing what she's supposed to be doing? With behavior worthy of respect and esteem. What if I, I she ain't doing it? With behavior worthy of respect and esteem. There is no caveat. With behavior worthy of respect and esteem, always seeking the best for her with an attitude of loving kindness. And the wife must see to it that she respects and delights in her husband, that she notices him and prefers him and treats him with loving concern, treasuring him, honoring him and holding him dear. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because we like to say, well, if I'm not getting it, then I'm not doing it. If I feel like she's not fulfilling her marital duty, if I feel like he's not doing what he's supposed to do, then I'm not doing my part. That's not what it said. Another scripture said, don't add or take away from the word. That's not what it says. He gives each one of us an outline of how we are to respond to one another. And here's the thing. Man, here, here's the thing. When, when this isn't working, it is important that you remember that there's still another connection. I've said this before. I said this last time we, we talked about marriage. It's, it is a triangle, okay? It is a triangle. There is the husband on one side, the wife on the other side, and God. It is a three-way connection. So if this connection right here ain't working, I'm going all the way. I'm going up. I'm going to talk to the Lord. And here's the thing. I'm not going to talk to the Lord about her. Lord, you see it. Fix it. You're going to have to fix it, Jesus. You better wake her up or something, Lord. You need to talk to her. Get your girl, Lord. You might want to go. Don't go like that. Why? Be, 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 because, because that's his child, first of all. So you ain't finna talk about his daughter any kind of way. Because you... You don't want to be talking and Lord, da, 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 da. he'd be like, you better keep your mouth off my child. That's, right. That's, right. that's my daughter. You, you might want to yeah. clear that up. You don't want to hear that. That's humbling. That's, that's humbling. Don't do that. So, 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 so then how am I going to go? First of all, let me reassure you that the Lord understands and feels your frustration and your emotions, right? But they are emotions, Okay, so the Lord understands that. So you don't need to rehash that over. Now you have to begin speaking life over your marriage. You have to begin speaking life over your spouse. Here you go. You have to begin speaking things that be not as though they were. Father, I thank you. I thank you for my, my spouse. I, I thank you that, that he is whole. I thank you that he is the leader of this house. I thank you that he is strong. I thank you that he is confident. God, I thank you that you've called him. I thank you that he is anointed. I thank you that he is anointed to lead. I thank you that he is a provider, that he is able to bring provision for everything that we... I'm beginning to... Y'all better take notes. God, I thank you for my wife. God, I thank you that she is whole in every area. God, I thank you that she is walking in the calling that you've had her call. God, I thank you that she is, 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 is she walks in joy, God. I thank you for the grace on her life, God. I thank you for, uh, uh, here we go. I thank you that you have given me the ability to communicate in a way in what, oh, I bet you won't. I bet you won't. I bet you won't. I thank you, God, that you will allow me to uh, communicate in a way that comes across in a manner of peace. I thank you that you allow me to identify my emotions so that I might be able to respond with love. Y'all yeah. yeah. better watch this back. Yeah. 
God, I thank you. I'm, I'm speaking life over my marriage. I'm speaking life over me. I'm speaking life over my spouse. Because as I continue to speak it, as I continue to pray it, then I will be able to see it. That's how that works. Because you've been trying to be mean for the longest and trying to get, get yeah, get, thank you, baby. Fix it for me. Get good results. You ain't getting no good results with that attitude. You ain't getting no good results with, 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 with just being mean and vindictive. And, 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 and no, it's not going to happen. We are to walk in grace. We are to walk in peace. We are to be peacemakers. Hallelujah. We are to, well, Ruby told me to say it again. We are to be peacemakers. We're to be peacemakers. And the Lord will give you and guide you as you pray to him. He will show you and tell you what you need to do. Oh, man. Okay. So we was having a not so nice moment. It's very brief. Uh, and I'm like, what is going on? I, what, woman? I didn't say that. I didn't say that, though. I didn't say that. I've been married 11 years. You ain't finna get me like that. I can say it here, just not. Anyway, uh, I was like, what's going on? And I'm getting frustrated because I'm like, you know, you start checking. You st- <laughs> like, what did I do, right? And I'll never forget, and I've said this before. This is nothing new. But I said, I said, uh, I was just wondering what's going on. And, and, and the Holy, I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me. And say, ask her, is she struggling? Is she feeling depressed? A couple things here. Uh, as African Americans, we don't really talk about depression, okay? <laughs> That's not a word we bring up. We don't really talk about that. That's not a thing. Uh, we strong, so we don't really be talking about that, number one. <laughs> number two, um, I don't know how this is going to turn out once I say it out of my mouth. Because once I say it, it's over. Once it's out, you're done for. So I'm like, I got to make sure it's Jesus. Because if not, this is going to elevate to a whole nother level of, right? Right. So, but I felt that it was the, and I wouldn't say that. So I felt like it was the Holy Spirit asking me to ask her. And I, I, we came home. Parked in the park, I'll never forget this. Parked in the parking lot, put the car in park. I looked at her, I said, baby, do you think you're, you're dealing with some depression? And she begins to bawl crying. And she was trying to identify within herself, trying to identify what was happening. And after that, we prayed, we talked, we sought some counseling, we, we did some uh, all of the things that needed to be done, and she came out of that moment but if I would have just been mad because she mad if I would have just been upset because she upset or if I just would have been being vindictive and being angry or being upset and 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 it would have it could have destroyed our marriage but taking the time to recognize where I'm at taking the time to recognize what's going on is it a stressful environment do I need to just take a nap Am I hungry? These are basic things. Recognize what's happening. Here we go. Do I feel like I'm being attacked right now? Do I I feel an emotionally sensitive place that I haven't dealt with? That maybe they weren't attacking me, but I feel this way because I'm dealing with my own insecurities And now I want to, it's identifying these things instead of just looking at the other person. No, I'm going to speak life over my marriage. I'm going to speak peace over my marriage. I'm going to be a peacemaker. I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to lay down my life, lay down my wants and honor God. And here's the thing, like Dad was saying, when you do that, your spouse has no Yes, submit. Yes. What you need, baby? You want some dinner? You want some? What you want? Huh? You hungry? I already made, I already made dinner. What you need? Huh? Oh, you need your foot rub? Just put your feet right there. Like, 
Because we have no problem reciprocating when it's already there. It's already. I got to go. All right. So when we look at our marriage, when we look at our thought, when we look at the concept of a future marriage, for those of us who are single, does it look like what Ephesians is saying? Does it look like this? And you can say, well, that was then, and that's old school, and nobody lives like that anymore. But here's the thing. The Word of God, God says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. He has not changed. His idea for marriage has not changed. Here's another thing. We have not changed. We have not changed. We are the same then as we are now. We are a sinful people who live in a sinful world, and we are easily distracted and pulled aside away from the will of God and from God's plan for our life. We have not changed, whether it's 2024 or 20 AD. And here's another thing. God's ability to empower us and walk with us to see the marriage that he desires for us hasn't changed either. His ability to walk with us and say, son, let me help you. Daughter, let me help you. Let me, let me show you. Let me talk to you. Let me show you in the word. Let me guide you. His ability to do that has not changed. He is the originator of marriage. So it makes sense that if you got an issue, you will bring it to the originator. It makes sense. That's... I, 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 you, you get to heaven and God says, hey, son, hey, daughter, how you doing? So glad that we're finally together. You know, I, I, had, I had this gift that I gave you. And I, I mean, I knew you were going to love this gift. I knew you were going to love it. I created it before you were even born. I was making it. I was molding it. I was adjusting it. I made sure it had this, it had that. I made sure it had the bells and the, all this, that. And the, oh, man. It was the, I could not wait to give you this gift. And this was one of the most amazing gifts that I ever created. And I gave it to you, son, daughter. What did you do with the gift that I gave you? Some of y'all be like, what gift are you talking about, Jesus? Lord, what gift are you talking about? And he would say, the spouse that I gave you, the husband that I gave you, the wife that I gave you. And some of us will say, well, God, I think that gift you gave me didn't work. You need to, you have to look back at that. It's funny, but then he will respond to you, well, if it didn't work, then why didn't you bring it back to me? then why didn't you talk to me about it if it didn't work? Since I gave it to you, it's my gift. Why didn't you bring it to me? Marriage is beautiful. It is a beautiful gift that has been given to us by God. Since it was given to us by God, since it was his plan and he originated, he has set ramifications on how we should walk in it and how we should do it. He has given it to us for a purpose. Regardless of what the world says, marriage is bigger than a sheet of paper. It is bigger than our likes. It is bigger than our wants. It is uh, bigger than just our desires being fulfilled. We have to view marriage with an eternal perspective. The way we honor marriage, the way we honor our spouse has eternal implications. When we realize that and we understand that the way we move in our marriage change, we have to understand that it's not just about what's happening right now, but it's about what's going to happen in eternity. What's going to happen in eternity? 2 Corinthians 4 says, look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. We have to see marriage through the lens of eternity. 
I often think, I desire for people to walk in the fullness of what God has called them to do. And my job as a husband is to make sure that my wife walks in the fullness of God for what she's called her to do. So I, the Lord has given me a gift to see it. So guess what? I'm going to support it. I'm going to encourage it. I'm going to pray over it. I'm also going to protect it because I realize that the enemy desires to steal it. That is our calling as husbands. And as wives, my wife encourages me. When I'm feeling at my lowest, she is the one who is hearing from the Lord. Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing better. I got to get out of here. Ain't nothing better than when your wife is praying over you. You could be mad as you want to be. You could be upset, angry. You could feel anything. Once that hand hit that back, Father, in the name, it's over. It's over. We done. Why? Because there is an anointing on her life specifically for you. To encourage you, to lift you up, to speak into your life. Nobody can do that but your spouse. Y'all better pray over each other. Y'all might be a little happy if y'all, let me get out of here. I got to get out of here. Whether you've been married for four years or 40 years, it's never too late to begin rebuilding the foundation of your marriage on the word of God. Don't matter. Even if you're engaged or, or you just liking one another, it's never too late to begin building the foundation of how you see marriage on the word of God. If today you recognize and this word that hits you right in between your eyes, you say, Pastor, I recognize that there is an area of my marriage that has not been built on the word of God. Maybe it was built on tradition. Maybe it was built on culture or on the word, but not the word of God. And the first thing we do, we identify the areas of our life, uh, excuse me, identify the areas of our marriage that don't align with the word and the will. We identify those things. We recognize those things. We see those things and we remove them. Remove those actions, those thoughts, and those mindsets that are anti-Christ and that are destroying your marriage. And remove them and replace them with mindsets and actions that edify and build up your marriage. Remove and replace with things that align with the word of God. What we said this whole series, new soil, new seed, new foundation. New soil, new seed, new foundation. Here's the thing. Building a foundation isn't a sprint. It's a marathon. It takes a while. It takes persistence. It takes grace. It takes love. It takes time. Each day is a new opportunity to build a new foundation or to build on a new foundation so that you can have the marriage that God intended for you to have. My prayer today is that we would allow God's word to be the foundation of our marriage, trusting in his grace to restore and renew. Glorify God with our unions. Reflect his love. Then the world will know. Then the world will know. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you for speaking to us in regards to our marriages and how we should respond, how we are to honor our marriages, honor one another, and honor the covenant that is marriage. God, today, for those of us who identify that we need a new foundation, that we need to remove and reassess and replace God, would you give us the strength to do what needs to be done? Would you empower us to love like you've called us to love, to persevere like you've called us to persevere, to, to walk how you've called us to walk? Would you give us the strength and honor to do just that? God, I thank you. I love you. Thank you for victory in marriages. I speak to every marriage 
in this room and those are online. Victory in marriages, in Jesus' name. I speak to those who are engaged and even those who are dating God. I thank you that even that portion of their courtship will be built on the foundation of the word of God. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did y'all get some out of that?